making sure Dragoon's tech game is on point and didn't even get the chance to in that sequence. Another back air here. Needles, bouncing fish, is that enough? Yes, oh. it is. I lied. <laughs> We're back. And it's going to be K. Rule taking on uh, Emba starting out here. We saw just a taste of Emba in the beginning uh, or in the end of the last match. And now Emba is back out to play the reversal right there with the invincibility. Baiting Geo to do something, anything, but Geo holds the resolve. And that gives them another edge guarding situation. Another chance to finish off this stock with the up smash on the shield with full rage. That will do it. All three are going towards going towards long he's gonna be able to isolate one there's one can you isolate the second now this has become a 1v1 here's the opportunity that glitch was looking for spike not being Bye. held oh my comedic obviously that's heard has to get on the spike there's the head Wait. quick dash here from morgiana though to open out this round one's gonna be king. okay find one okay find two two full force buys or full buys away from taking it into ot that doesn't particularly help, nor does that. It may very well be it, though. The fact that he took so long is going to be their Achilles heel, but they will be able to defuse behind that wall. I don't know if it's wall bangable. It doesn't matter. Glitch will be able to find the shot they were looking for. To I mean, as reinforcements gets a touch as well. There's still one more defender in the name of Troy, Ooh, but no demo. longer with the demolition. Nice. Fire shot from Zernite ties it up. Uh, we're trying to see if Zernite can split open Ooh. this goal differential a bit more. They have made themselves go under less pressure. Irvotable didn't have 17 shots registered on Truly. them, but they might in this game <laughs> oh, number three. No. Does go the perfect direction for Peloza after they give it off to the other side. They're trying to go for the center. They're trying to go for the bump, but they can't get anything. Grasping at straws, and they have buttery fingers as it goes the other direction, and FIU take the victory. Well, it's always got that conga line in terms of power and being able to know who's going in first. <laughs> there goes size of weapon 4k, and they're still actively trying to scale this space. Look at this pristine coming straight <laughs> on up to Zysa. There's one right behind him as well. Looks like Visor might fall, and that's exactly what happens. But started out with yet another pristine opening pick has turned into a 1v1 that Anchor desperately needs to win. Time starting to tick, and Anchor will deliver. Getting that aftershock down. And now we wait! And this is Christian! Oh! Henzo! Damage. Oh, they put the immortality field down. Another call lessons out from Grebka destroys that immortality field. The Maywall trying to play a defensive blockade, but it's just not going to be able to. Both Lucios down. Cami bites the bullet early on. The Annihilation gets annihilated with the rest of Staten Island. Now, Primal Online Nanoblade almost as well. Hello everyone and welcome to the ECAC Elite League. My name is Soy, alongside me, Kilo Miles, and we are getting ready for week two of SSBU action here. This one should be a fun one. Buena Vista University taking on Siena Heights Smash and a, a really fun battle for these two colleges getting back into the swing of things here in the spring split. Yeah, this is the elite division. So these two teams are competing to get up a tier into the elite division. And how do you do that? Well, by beating all your competition at the elite level. It's like the whole philosophy of, you know, do you go to a regional if you're not good at your local yet? Do you go to a national if you're not good at your regional yet? You gotta punch at your belt before you can go above. You've gotta earn your spot. You gotta earn your rep 
in these lower divisions before you can make your way all the way up to the Super Elite with the likes of Fisher, with the likes of Delaware, and that's what both these teams are fighting to do. And there's a lot of talent in this elite league as well. Four groups will be focusing on group number one with Buena Vista and Siena Heights for this matchup. Both of these teams played last week. Buena Vista, they're looking to bounce back after a week one loss to the Bethel Pilots Blue. It was a tough loss too. Only took three stocks between their two crew battles, but Bethel looking very strong out the gates. Meanwhile, Siena Heights, they took down Brooklyn College Maroon Smash, but it was a whole lot closer both crew battles came down to the final two stocks two o's in both of those victories but they were able to clutch out both so sienna heights they got the victory but they would have liked it to be a little bit cleaner and i think this one we're in for a fun one buena vista looking to get back on that win column and sienna heights looking to stay on top yeah when you're looking to defend yourself like that it's always a fun time uh there's something about a team on a back foot a team with something to prove. I mean, you can get a little complacent at the top, and that's what you see sometimes with, like, the very top people. Like, they clutch it out in the end, sure, but they let it get a little closer than it should. These teams, they don't let that happen. They are always mean in business. They're always, and sure, they're here to have fun, but they're also here to win. <laughs> And we get to see these rosters too. Both schools uh, fielding a team of about five or so players, but starting off, I believe, for the side of, uh, I believe it was Siena Heights. We're getting, or wait, no, sorry, for the side of Buena Vista. Victory got locked in as the opening player. Victory did not get to play last week. So this will be their first time playing on the spring split. We got the info that they will be or that they've typically mained Mewtwo, which is not a character that we see all that frequently here on stream. And meanwhile, Game Deity is going to be the one coming out for Sienna Heights, who I was talking to the captains before the match, and Game Deity is one of the main threats on this team. They're the kind of person who can sometimes just go in and sweep through an entire team. Now, is that possible? This early in the season, maybe. People are still leveling out to the d division they deserve to be in. Uh, but uh, Game Deity has in the past demonstrated the consistency you need to force their way through an entire team. 12 stocks apiece. And uh, if they're bringing that kind of firepower to the table, well, 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 BVU better watch out. Coming out the gate swinging, and that's what helped Sienna Heights secure the victory last week. Like we mentioned, uh, Buena Vista struggled last week to take stocks against the Bethel Pilots Blue, but they've got a, a lineup that has a lot of potential. You look at the characters in this lineup overall, a lot of characters that have at least shown uh, to do very well in professional bracket play. So some good bots to pull from and such there. But we'll have to see if they can kind of put their homework to uh, to the test here and put, you know, see what they can translate over into this match. Uh, victory, like you said, going up against Game Deity. The character matchup we're looking at here is Mewtwo versus either Pyramithra or Sora. What do you think that neutral will kind of play out as? Is there something distinctive about Game Deity's play style? I mean, Pyramithra players are going to get a little <laughs> mad at me for this. At the end of the day, just plus, press neutral air. Press nair. It's a really good move. It's a really good move. And it's good because it prevent, provides a lot of opportunities to mix up your opponent. If it hits in the air, that's a, that's a little extension. If it hits on the ground... It's a little extension. If it catches them in attack, you guessed it. Um, and they can use that to just completely control the stage. And Mewtwo has to be very careful about the way they move. Now, Mewtwo obviously does have projectiles, does have the ability to linger off stage in a way that Pyramithra players really don't like because their recovery is very linear. So there are some strengths there, some things you can leverage. But at the end of the day, I feel like Pyramithra is going to control the stage the entire time, and it's going to be up to Victory to find a way to get a reversal. Yeah, Victory's going to have to be very much so on point with their defense, on point with their spacing, if they're going to find those reversals, because also Pyramithra does have a, a the poke, uh, at least, uh, in terms of the distance of that sword, especially on Pyra, which is where things, in my mind, can really get out of hand early on in this matchup that extra kill power that pyra brings to the table against a light character like mewtwo i mean you could you can 
probably take stocks around that 60th percent marker if victory is not careful. 100%. Um, one ledge trap. One bad tech. That's all you need to turn the tide of a fight when you're playing Pyramithra. Um, and that's true of a lot of characters, but not all of those characters have the luxury of having attached to a giant hitbox. So again, you're looking for offstage Edgars. You're looking for low percent kills on the side of victory. Meanwhile, Game Deity, you're looking for them to just keep their gameplay consistent they want to hit an air at center stage use it to connect some other moves towards the side of the stage get them to get victory to 40 percent edge guard scenario get a good ledge trap switch to pyra get a kill that's what you want to be seeing every single stock and it's up to victory to throw a wrench in those plans it's interesting too i'm going back over some notes and uh we did not get to see D game deity play last week either for sienna uh for sienna heights so they were able to clutch up against Brooklyn College with Perry, Velvet, and I believe that's Luddite as their uh, final member in those rounds. But the three of them were able to get the victory. And now you bring in the powerhouse of game deity in on this Pyramithra that is very, very dangerous, very, very capable, like you said, of being able to just run through some teams that have you know found their struggles in the past. So it's going to be a tough call here. And especially since this feels like a, a tougher matchup, at least for the side of Buena Vista uh, in terms of the character matchup, Mewtwo versus Pyramithra. Starting off on, a, on the back foot is not what they want, obviously. They're going to have to find some ways to pull off some reversals, but this was a kind of blind pick right into the opening round. And when you get into a blind pick matchup where you just – feel counterpicked right off the gate. How do you try and overcome that? What kind of mindset do you have to have to be able to, you know, get into the zone and get into the action? Yeah, a lot of the times when you're going into those blind picks, you're expecting someone to be playing an everyman character. Someone who doesn't really lose any matchups super hard. Someone like a uh, Pyramithra, like a Palutena, like a Game & Watch. Um, and so... When you're playing one of those characters, you're almost looking forward to someone playing like a wacky character because you're like, I picked this character because I have experience or I don't really need to have experience against them because I'm just going to play my game plan. The problem with that, uh, when you're on the other side of the foot, when you're playing the kind of out there character for the opener, instead, you're thinking like, I've beaten a thousand Pyramithras. Like... You go on quick play, Pyramithra, 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 Pyramithra. You're going to be seeing them every single time. Aegis, Aegis, Aegis. And I think what they have to do is not necessarily be ready for the character, but be ready for the player. Because um, you can know all you want about this character. You can know their frame did. And I've said it before that once you hit a character, you're not comboing a player, you're comboing a character. But at the same time, you have to be ready for the fact that they have a frame one combo breaker. They have a very good ed air dodge. They have the switch themselves to stall them in the air. They have so many tools to bring out reversals in these situations. And so, you just have to be completely ready for all that. It does look like we've got a gentleman to PS2. I thank everyone for their patience, by the way, as we're going through this. Um... Just making sure everything is all set. The lobby is all arranged before we get into it. Don't want to have to stop in the middle. So, yeah. Uh, we are almost ready to get underway. Everyone's saying good luck, have fun. Handshakes are being shook. Buttons are warmed. I think it's ready for a match. So I just about. Week two about to get underway. Sienna Heights looking to extend their win streak to two in a row. Meanwhile, Buena Vista looking to get back in the win column. We'll see how the action plays out. Victory opening up against Game Deity. Lots to watch for in this matchup. Mewtwo versus Pyramithra on the docket should be an exciting one. We're jumping into the action on, like you said, PS2 to kick off our day. Gonna be just throw up instead of that Pyramithra we were talking about, but it still feels like Victory's gonna have their hands full. 
So Sora is going to bring a lot of the same advantages that Mewtwo does. Uh, the ability to linger in the air, especially for offstage edgeguard situations. And it's a little talk to death, but his ability to have that disjoint have, and have shocking amounts of hit stun on all of his moves, um, especially coded hit stun. Uh, you have to be ready for the fact that if you get caught by a neutral air, you're going to get caught across the stage as Game Deity is on the back foot thus far. Victory going very deep off stage to try and finish them off. But Game Deity holds on with their superior recovery and gets the opportunity for a reversal right here. Doesn't take it. Does not find the kill off that forward air, though, but a ton of action right off the bat as that side B looked dangerous, but that's a roll behind grab, and back throw on Mewtwo will kill it, that percent, so victory is first to strike in this one. Only 61% on their opening stock, too, so a pretty substantial lead, and they're already working pretty heavily on stock number two. Very aggressive edge guard there, looking for the forward air, but unable to find it. Just holding them in the corner for as long as possible. Unable to find another hit, and they'll be able to roll out for the moment. Dash attack only finds a shield. That jab will actually clip. Game Deity holding on for now. They find another hit. Thunder gets blocked by the platform. And victory. Well, their defense had to be on point, and it is right now. Game Deity cannot find an opening. Ooh, I love that use of the Shadow Ball to disrupt that side B, but right now Victory is getting a little bit creative with their movement. Tries to catch a jump right there, gets Game, De Game Deity to hold their shield, finishes them off with a forward air. Victory is starting to run away with this match. Game Deity, who we were talking up as a player who can run through entire teams, all of a sudden is on the verge of getting three-stocked, throwing out the Fireball. They're not looking too hot. Victory is putting on the pressure. It's up to Game Deity to find a way to clutch this out. Victory was looking for that down air, but unfortunately got clipped by the up B. He'll eat a, bu a bunch of more damage from this neutral B, but he just simply does not care. He's already pretty much at kill percentage. If he can hold on, well, mm. Caster's Curse timing is everything, isn't it, Miles? Up B out of shield will take the first stock off of Victory. Third hit of Nair finally finds a perch and into the Thundaga immediately. Game Deity, though, trying to play a very conservative playstyle, trying to keep their distance, and I'll be honest, against a combo fiend like Mewtwo, especially in the hands of Victory, I don't think that's a good idea. You've got to get aggressive. You've got to put on the pressure. You can't play reactive, because right now Victory is finding their way through this onslaught of spells. Cycling through, back to Blizzaga. Oh, pull the counter twice out, but not gonna find it. And run off Shadow Woo! Ball will do the trick. Victory taking a big lead, two stocks, and shutting down the opener of Sienna Heights. Very nice stuff from Victory, who I think right there at the end remembered that they have a reflector. Um... Or maybe it just was never viable to use. Maybe if they used it on that Fire Aga, it just would have clanked. You would have been in lag. Uh, not really worth it. But I really like the way Victory held their edge there, brought it back towards the end. Um, like, when it looked like Game Deity was starting to find their ground, what did Game Victory do? They just waited. They took a few hits, sure. They just waited for Game Deity to make a mistake in their spell rotation, get caught in the freeze, and then Victory swoops in from above. And I love the way, by the way, they finish that stock with the offstage Shadow Ball, because what is Game Deity going to do there? Air dodge? You might just be dead. Uh, try to go for a counter? It'll make you immune, sure, but you're not actually going to reflect it. Uh, the uh, counter that Sora has only just sends it behind you. There really wasn't a ton of risk there, for, and for that much reward, great awareness by Victory right there to finish off the stock. It's something you don't see all that, that frequently either, too, and using that Shadow Ball pushes him back towards the stage, should still be able to recover. So, very well done by Victory. Really commending the play around the ledge, the ledge trapping. It felt like game day, he spent what felt like an eternity off stage, especially on, I believe it was stock two, and uh, just could not find a way out of the corner cleanly. Victory was seemingly everywhere where he wanted to go, and although he wasn't always hitting Game Deity, he was pressuring areas where Game Deity wanted to be. So Victory able to 
hold on to two stocks here. This is a button check that is uh, coming up on your screens between us here. Uh, but Inkling being locked in as the character, I believe, tells us that it's likely Velvet stepping in to the ring as member number two of Sienna Heights. This is one of the captains, and they... Uh, I was talking to them a bit before this match. I think they said they placed 97 at Big House, which ain't bad. I think that's 2-2, two, 3-2. Two, two. That's not bad. Uh, that's making it out of pools for sure. Um, so Velvet bringing some heat to the table, some professional experience. But Victory is a tough cookie to go up against. Um, I Is this actually a button check? This looks like gameplay. No, no, this is definitely a button check. Okay. Um, as... Uh, Victory, I, I called out Victory's movement, but let's talk about it a little bit more. Victory was using a lot of forward rolls, which have very little lag in ultimate. It's a great way to cross up your opponent. Uh, it's a, a Japanese innovation that's come into prevalence these last two years. Japanese players using the forward roll is almost like a budget wave dash, just going straight through their opponent, straight up to their face because of the low lag it puts you in. Um, you're not really going to be reacting to that. More than that, uh, Victory was also creative with the way they use teleport creative with the way they drifted back with their aerials um and overall it's very tough to predict exactly where they're going to be but against a character like inkling who has arguably some of the best movement in the game that agility is going to be put to the test and more than that your control of that agility We'll see if they're able to master that control here. Velvet entering the ring. Two stocks for victory. They'll have to drop one right off the bat here. Eight to six, our scoreline. Can victory be stopped? Or will Velvet, or can Velvet even up the scoreline? Or will victory continue their run? Time to find out. Back to PS2 here. And uh, one thing also at the start of that game, of game number one, victory and... Uh, game deity, very fast-paced action. We're up to about 60%, roughly 15 seconds in, and then the game slowed down. This one seemingly at a similar pace here as Velvet, able to get a good early combo, lots of damage early on here, 107. Now up being back to the ledge, forward air back, so, oh, the, that's a good down B to Confusion, but won't be able to follow up cleanly off the back of it. No, they will not, and now... It's a little bit back to neutral right there. Just, oh, the disable? You thought you were going for a stun? No, it's Victory's turn. Uh, Victory's playing very well, spacing right outside Velvet's burst range with that dash dance forward tilt, but slips right in under the grab and gets a strong hit. That's going to be Velvet taking the first stock right there, and that's an opener with the up tilt. Catches the air dodge in a 50-50. Now they're comboing them up. Can't extend with the nair. Victory has a chance to stabilize, but what a commanding opening right there from Velvet. Really strong here, but if they want to bring things back to even, they've got to hold on to the stock. They're at 94, and they've got victory off stage, and Inkling isn't shy of kill power, too, at 79%. You gotta be careful here if you are victory. Forward tilt will just barely beat out the roller. Now another low recovery here from Velvet. They try and get the read with Ooh. the up smash, but it's not going to connect. Victory's forward air gets stuffed out, and instead Velvet's will kill. And just like that, we are back to a tied game. Victory was baiting their line, but Velvet was not biting. I mean, just fishing right there towards the end. An up smash at ledge against a player like that? You know Victory's not going to fall. Uh, Velvet is not going to fall for that. Uh, Velvet was throwing everything at them. I talked about the fact that Victory had to be very cautious about that tricky movement that they had because it's not super optimal. Um, and we are seeing that exploited to the furthest extent right there. Sure, the teleport behind got them an opening, got them an edge guard situation, but what did that really get them? You weren't really edge trapping Link uh, Inkling. They were uh, finding their way back to center stage a lot. And more than that, Victory just uh, wasn't getting those big conversions. They were just living off of stray hits. Meanwhile, it felt like Velvet got one up tilt and Victory's stock was gone towards the end right there. Commanding opening right there from Sienna Heights captain looking to get Sienna Heights a possible lead going into the latter half of this game. I mean, the percentage really told the tale, right? Like you said, mm -hmm. the moment that Velvet got one hit, it was followed up by 
three, four more. And all of a sudden the percentage went from zero to 90 on that first stock really before victory was able to answer back with a, with a few hits. I did like some of victory's plays uh, in particular using disable, hitting it twice in that set, kind of an interesting way to stuff out velvet's approaches, but at the end of the day, unable to really get too much off the back of it. Part of it, part of uh, the reason I call it out in particular is Inkling's height. Uh, I did not think that Disable would be like the go-to move to stuff out, uh, you know, approach options from it. But it seemed to be working. If you hit it two times that you threw it out. But uh, at the end of the day, Velvet able to adapt and crouch underneath. But as you're seeing, a peach on screen means that it's time for Video Game Vortex to step into the ring as the second member of Buena Vista. Maybe a incorrect stage, maybe a button check right here. No, it does look like they are right into the game. Uh, and Velvet caught in their movement. Video Game Vortex playing a very distance game, looking for some kind of opening right here. And I'm curious what that opening is going to be, because they're not really fishing for any combo starters. They're just looking for stray hits. And when Velvet is this good at extending right here, I think you need a lot more than stray hits. Pops him up to the platform, gets an extension, and now Video Game Vortex is at kill percent. Love that combo. Most players just take a forward smash and call it good, but instead they get the combo off the back of it. That forward air won't be able to kill quite yet, but Video Game Vortex is absolutely at kill percent. What can they do out of the corner here? They go for the side B, they get rolled though, and that's gonna be a forward smash, and that's gonna be stock number one, taken off the board and a lead for Sienna Heights. Yeah, all inked up right there, but a landing forward air has more than enough hit stun to open them up for more damage. Great stuffing of that side B with the back air, and they're a full ink, taking a lot of damage. 70% from a single back air. You think Inkling's aerials are balanced, and then you see them with full ink, and you're like, how is this allowed in the game? Inkling right now, Velvet right now, is putting on a lot of pressure without even being near them. Throws out a side B, opportunity for a kill once again from Velvet, who's just letting Video Game Vortex burn all their resources in the air. So much damage already, another roller will land, and that's an up smash this time around, and that will take stock number two off the board. Velvet is at 123, so they do have to be a little careful, but right now, they are finding everything. Back airs, neutral airs, everything's comboing, and all of a sudden, Video Game Vortex, who was just at zero, is all of a sudden ah. up to 78%, make it 90. Another roller doesn't find the mark this time, but a dash attack and forward tilt will only find shield. Ooh, and now that might just be game. No, no strong hit, but pop him off the top with the sneakers. That's Velvet taking another three stock right there. Holding on to every single one of their stocks. Velvet has established themselves as the player to watch right here on Siena Heights. And Buena Vista is struggling for an answer. I mean, Velvet was just all over that matchup. And you talked about it, right? Once you get a hit... You know, they are comboing a character, and Velvet has masterful movement on Inkling, and they were able to just connect so many aerials together. That's the power of this character, right? Neutral air into back air and just keep chasing them down, and that's exactly what Velvet did. Video Game Vortex had some opportunities, you know, but at the end of that game, felt like they were getting desperate to find those hits, things like throwing out the side B, the dash attacks were only finding shield, and the, none of the turnips, I think, even connected, despite pulling a handful of them. Yeah, the turnips were just too slow to keep up with a character as fast as Inkling. And the way Velvet was adapting to Video Game Vortex's very different style of movement, um, which is that... For a Peach, they were very straightforward and telegraphed with what they wanted. They wanted the strong hits. They wanted dash attack. They wanted side B. And Velvet was ready to just contest that head on, trusting in their disjoint, trusting in their ability to use um, back air to interrupt the side B or their own side B to interrupt the side B. Uh, Video Game Vortex was uh, stuck struggling, looking for a way to edge guard them, and ultimately Velvet did not give it to them whatsoever. And it's one last player stepping up to the plate, a Sephiroth coming up to try and stop Velvet's rampage through this. 
Well, Velvet trusted their disjoints to get many a damage and many a stock off the board, but that might be a problem in a match like this now. Sephiroth, that sword is got a ton of poke to it, and there you're going to get an encounter very early on, so X-Wing Toes will... We'll see what they can do, and they cut into this lead and see the third member of Sienna Heights where Velvet run away with this one. Yoshi's story, also a stage that we don't frequently see, but this could be another stock, but instead they get footstooled off the combo, and X-Wing is able to escape. This stage is some question marks for me, I won't lie to you, Soy. And the main reason was what we just saw right there. If that connected, X-Wing Toast was dead. Now, Velvet's timing was a little bit off because that's one of the hardest up throw combos in the game. I don't know why people thought it was viable. But at the same time, you don't really need it. The Blast Zones are so small. X-Wing Toast is off the side. No time. Dash Tech, though, trying to re-even this situation. But it doesn't matter. Velvet is back on stage and ready to keep creating mayhem. But you can't get tricky on the platforms. Otherwise, you will get a no-nonsense up smash. Up smash right in really the middle of the stage, just covering just enough of that platform and really everything around it. So Velvet gets caught out there. A couple of these charged up bees are how X-Wing has been recovering and they've actually kind of stalled it out just long enough for Velvet to get there and interrupt the recovery. So something to look for as this set continues on, maybe a window for Velvet to get even more damage and they get the oh, platform my. extension. They nearly get the kill off the top. The up smash gets countered, but it won't find anything. Up be straight up is not the angle he's looking for. And that will be another stock in Velvet's hand. A couple unfortunate inputs right there and because of that velvet is not letting you get away with miss inputs for free this counter has been a little bit of a thorn in velvet side as, let's be honest as it is all of ours but uh velvet is just finding ways to disengage letting x-wing toast cool down anytime they get too hot and x-wing toast is off the side velvet only losing one stock sweeps through two players on the side of Buena Vista. And uh, Velvet is showing why Sienna Heights is in the elite division. Velvet with a great run there. And like you said, just taking down every single member of Buena Vista here in the opening crew battle. Like, uh, you know, This is a regular season match, so you still need to win two of these battles in order to get the victory for the week. So we will have a, a second crew battle coming up. But Velvet, uh, like you mentioned, they are the player to watch right now this week. They have turned on the Jets, and their overwhelming offense and combo game have taken over this series and taken game one of it. Yeah, what a show right there. Just the fluidity that Velvet th flows through their advantage state. Starts out with a throw, with an up tilt, with a down tilt sometimes. Uh, and then just find ways to convert. It's never really a true combo, if you'll notice. There's always opportunities for people to escape, uh, as demonstrated by the fact that X-Wing Toast was getting down airs out in the middle of those combos, the way Video Game Vortex was getting floats. But it doesn't matter, because even when Velvet misses their extensions, they still hold on to advantage. They don't overextend. They let the person throw out their option. They let them float up in the air. They let them down air because they know that they will be there to catch them. Velvet knows they'll be there to follow up on their advantage state, to keep up the pressure, to keep the flame going. And that is the mark of a good player, that even when you drop your combo, you're still ready to keep the game in your favor. And you can especially see that confidence as the games go on, especially when they're trending into the red percent. I mean, think back to that match against Peach, where they were able to just... At 124, you think, okay, maybe they'll play a bit more carefully. You, you know, they they want to try and hold on to the stock. No, just zero percent. They see zero and say that is that is sandbox material. Let me go. Let me go to work. And they just continue to rack up the damage, chase down every character, and they're able to get the first victory here. Game deity unable to do too much in the opener, but again, first time on stream, first game of their fall or sorry spring split so maybe they needed to get that one out of their system we'll get the uh lineups going for uh set number two momentarily but i guess the question is for buena vista what do you change in this lineup do you try and find a different matchup obviously velvet is going to be a problem but 
Is there a counter pick that you're kind of leaning towards or a strategy, a play style that you think you can lean into here if you're Buena Vista? I feel like you got to throw your glass cannon at Velvet early. Um, I feel like holding on to victory until Velvet comes out is definitely a play you could go for. Now, granted, I do not believe victory in a head-on-head -head match beats Velvet. But I think victory can bring it close. I think victory can put a stop. Uh, or at least a slow in any shenanigans that they have on the table. Even though Victory didn't really take any stocks, they held a pretty commanding opening, though that could have just been because Velvet had just come in. I'll be honest, though, this is a conversation you need to have as a team. You need to be like, okay, let's be honest with ourselves. Who felt like they had the best chance? Because looking at the on-paper stats right there, only one person took a stock, and it was X-Wing. <laughs> uh, that's not really good numbers for you. So you got to be very cautious about uh, what you're bringing to the table here, knowing that you, even if you get through Velvet, are going to be playing through a lot of other talented people on the side of Sienna Heights. So I'm curious how that conversation is going. I'm curious how this is looking, and... It actually is going to be Victory as a starter once again. Victory going to get locked in, uh, I believe, for round number one for set of Buena Vista. And we've talked about the that kind of aspect, too, especially with a lot of these uh, championship caliber matchups, right? It feels like one player is just getting a stock or two more than the rest of the squad. And you, so you think, okay, how do we get around that? How do we shut them down? If they are the big point scorer, how can we at least slow them down? And a lot of the times the answer is, like you mentioned, just keep things close, keep things within reach, right? Take it stock by stock here. And that's going to be the, the, the struggle here for Buena Vista because those stocks, especially the way Velvet is playing, the hourglass on those stocks is rather wide and it's getting uh, cut down very, very quickly, right? The, percent the percentages are trending towards red a lot faster than I think Buena Vista is normal uh, or is uh, more familiar to. And that's partially because Velvet is on a character that just so easily racks up damage. I mean, with the paint, with the aerial combos, they can zero to 60 you very, very quickly in just a few hits. And Velvet is being very good about finding those openings. And Velvet, we, we've talked about how to beat Velvet, but let's just look at what Velvet is doing well. The combo game, it's flashy. Sure, but what else are they doing to set up those combos? Well, they're racking up damage and percentage when the opponent is off stage or trying to get off ledge. Um, they're making good use of the fact that Splat Bomb is option coverage. It is a long, lingering hitbox that players have to respect. And Velvet is setting that up at a get-up angle and covering jump. Or they're tossing up in the air and waiting at the getup angle. They are constantly covering multiple options with that splat bomb. So they always have a fallback if they guess right or they don't react. There's always something else in the air that they have to be ready to catch. Additionally, uh, Velvet has not been caught lacking on a single recovery. They see their opponent going off stage. They go really low. If they see them getting aggressive, maybe they'll go uh, really high. Um... I've seen maybe one time it looked like Velvet didn't recover the way they wanted, but the fact of the matter is, if Inkling doesn't want to get hit, it's really hard to do it. They have a linear recovery, but with so much drift, and so much versatility, and so much range, that does it really matter that it's so linear? <laughs> They've got a, a great mastery of their movement on this character. And uh, uh, the other thing, too, as we get ready for set number two here of this crew battle, that Velvet also is finding unique ways to catch their opponents. I mean, how many times do you think they were able to catch, uh, I believe it was Video Game Vortex, with the, with the roller in particular, a character that spends a lot of time in the air, but... We get into crew battle number two, and this time around, Perry will take to the stage for the side of Sienna Heights, a character there, or a player that we got to see a little bit of last week, and on the dark, or sorry, on the 
Pit this time around. They've also played Dark Pit in the past, but it's going to be Pit this time. And this is a matchup of uh, characters that I feel like, once again, have pretty solid combo game. But sometimes those hitboxes are not exactly what they appear or not exactly the, the easiest to get around. Ooh, Perry gets a bit of advantage state, but Victory uses their teleport to take it right back. And then, with that uh, down B, Perry is able to keep themselves safe off stage, sure. But right now, Victory is only over committing off stage because they feel like that shield might not be up next time. Eventually, Victory is going to be ready to cover those lower recoveries, and Perry has to have an answer when that happens. Perry finds an opening with a grab though. Neutral air, arrow won't land. Second one gets dodged around by the up B. Lots of arrows from Perry this game. And Victory has thrown out a couple side Bs, but really to no avail. Catches one there, so it has to up B to the ledge. Uses the shield this time around, but a lot of time to reflect as it had to traverse the whole stage. Up B's back into Perry, and that will lead to a lot of damage, and all of a sudden, Percents have started to even back out. 117 to 103. Saipi's hmm. in, but the Shadow Ball just barely got there before the punch came out. Now a trade will go in Victory's favor. Perry forced low here once more. Perry's got to be careful here at 145. They are the one that's closer to that killer range, and Victory's got good spacing right now, but it's going to uh -oh. be the Reflector to knock Victory away. And this is a victory we haven't really gotten the chance to see. A victory who's struggling to find a kill. A stray hit at 150 will eventually do the job, but that's a little too little too late. Uh, Perry is getting a little predictable in the air, I feel. That's where victory is finding their main openings. Perry jumps up and double jumps once, double jumps twice, flap, flap, and then they're back down on the stage. Uh, I feel like Perry, if they just vary that aerial movement a tiny bit more, the main area where victory has been finding their openings is going to be a lot harder to capitalize on. Back away here, not even tempting fate with that shadow ball lingering. But now the combo game is online here for Victory. They can't find that neutral air though. Perry still struggling to find this kill, just finding ways to catch Victory, but not in a position where he can actually get the stock. Again, reflects the Shadow Ball, but the side B just doesn't quite reach Mewtwo. Holding shield for a moment. And Victory again, starting to catch these jumps. Now gets a forward air. Holding stage, plenty of jumps to get back for Perry. Now, looking for an opening, but the forward air does not land. Victory. Dancing back and forth, looking for an aerial to start this combo, but Perry is looking for these big swings and just nothing is connecting for him. He wants this stock, he'll poke away at some more with some arrows, saying, hey, you've got to come to me eventually, but that's not really the case here. Victory starting to find more and more damage, but that forward air should do the trick, catches the roll from Victory back, and that will be one stock off the board. And I would be excited for Perry here, but it was Victory who dominated the low percents. Um, it was only when Perry uh, caught Victory in their inability to find a kill that they got a lot done. But Perry looking a little more warmed up now. Two down throws right here, 34%. But a little mix up on their movement means that Perry is once again on the back foot, once again trying to recover. Gets a little bit of reflection right there, and they get past the edge guarding right there. A scramble situation, air dodges, ro rolls, spot dodges, and neither of them finds a hit. An up smash in the middle of the stage is punished, and right now, Perry is the one who still somehow survives. I was going to commend Victory's use of forward tilt, but in that sequence there, just continued to throw it out, and it only found air. Down B won't connect either. 64% here on victory, so pretty significant lead, but the arrows will help chip away at it. Now a back air landing from Perry. They get a grab as well. Arrow won't connect this time around. Quick up B again, just barely evading Perry's big swinging hits. And unfortunately for Perry, continuing to throw them out. Hasn't really found a ton of success with it. Arrow will catch the jump, though, I believe, and so it'll be forced for a low recovery. Again, these forward tilts for victory, when they connect, feels like it's worth so much, but it will be the up smash to do the trick. And that's another stock off the board of Perry. But what can they do at zero here? Do they continue to find these opportunities? They're able to air dodge around. The scramble continues, and it's down smash that wins for Perry. And neutral air will take the stock. And all of a sudden, it's a dead even game. 
Perry is stubborn in the way they refuse to give up their stock at high percents. I thought Victory was going to run away with this game in the way that Victory brought Perry from 0 to 90, but Perry, in their survivability alone, has found a way to claw this back. And they've also warmed up. Uh, these combos that we've been seeing from Perry were not something that were in the initial stock, but this is a repeat once again. The charge down smash caught in a DI mix up is all that victory needed to finish them off right there ended how it started with victory getting a very large advantage at early percents and finishing it strong victory holds on with a one stock advantage now for buena vista but perry did not make it easy and one thing that i was noticing that we really didn't see i believe from previous sets the number of grabs perry was able to find in particular uh, and getting a lot of damage off the back of them as well certainly helped uh get them up to a percent where they could secure some stocks with some stray hits but victory it felt like the defense at times looked a little shaky but it didn't matter when like you said the early game that zero percent combo ability was able to give them such an such an advantage in the later stages yeah it was a sight to behold the way neither of those players would give up an inch and i i, I think it is interesting um it's a little bit of a tangent but not too much how these players who are proven to be good victory we talked about their interesting movement the way they would go for these crazy mix-ups how when faced with someone who won't play into their gimmicks all of a sudden it becomes like a slap fest like little neutral exchanges here or there to find the entire match you can't get your rhythm going uh, it's jazz without any rhythm just discord and you find little bits of order every now and then but chaos 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 throughout the whole thing until finally victory emerges on top but oh man the way victory was just shut down by the stone wall that was perry was very interesting to see and very many a scramble situation throughout that series as well throughout that game <clears throat> excuse me uh just many times where it was you know Spot dodge, forward tilt, spot dodge, smash attack, so on, so forth. And eventually, it was typically, I, I believe, victory coming out on top in those exchanges. But it, they were a bit elongated. And it was typically the, the quick forward tilts that were able to get the job done. Victory making a lot of good use of that move, but unfortunately unable to really find kills with it. It's often being hit across the stage or like I, like I pointed out, used in those scramble situations. So Victory's got good mastery and good knowledge of, you know, how far that that tail really extends to as it was able to stuff out a couple of approaches from Perry in the past. But now what can they do with this one stock? Can they continue to utilize that move? They might have a, a fun time with this one, but it is very, very dangerous. The Donkey Kong is entering for the side of Sienna Heights. And this one should be explosive. Luddite showing off. Well, sure, hot fast falls. It's not incredible <laughs> movement, but it is disciplined movement. I will give them that. Um, and I love the way they're going for these mix-ups, these B reverse down Bs. Um, and they're showing that they are willing to get aggressive. Knocks Victory out of the air with a Nair, and they convert right there. Another stray hit, another trade. Trade's basically always good for Donkey Kong right here, and always bad for Mewtwo. This Glass Cannon, who is finding some ways to put the hurt on them, and he can't land right on top of a down smash. That explosion reaches high, but the Ford Air, an opportunity to finish right there, doesn't catch the air dodge. Luddite is not able to find the kill quite yet a little bit behind they're able to grab the ledge but that forward tilt should do the trick and it does so one off the board there of luddite victory going to work on stock number two they try to go for the shadow ball but they armor through it with the grounded upbeat and now victory's stock is working on borrowed time 126 against the heavy on one of the lightest characters in the game a straight hit should do it but somehow the down b actually gets underneath that dk punch and so they'll be able to survive get a little bit more damage online here shadow balls galore covering the bottom of the stage so Luddite forces the platform frequently. What? Forward smash able to catch high on that platform. 
It's an unfortunate hitbox. Low recovery. Trying to reverse one. And he'll get spiked for it. Down air will do the trick. And Luddy shuts down victory. I'll be honest, Soy. I don't know what you do there as Mewtwo to not get hit by that. That almost looked like a true combo. Um, I think the only option might have been an immediate air dodge up to survive that. But it was beautiful the way that Luddite caught them with the first few hits of the Kong Copter. But then, what do they do? They snap to ledge. They don't finish the move. There's no knockback, no opportunity to tech. And then when Victory gets locked in their teleport animation, you've already short hopped up. And down air down. Getting the spike and ending the game. Good stuff from Luddite right there. Stopping the bleeding right there. And uh, putting Sienna Heights back in this. Luddite did drop one stock early on there. Victory was able to get one off the board. So Buena Vista will still hold the lead. But Luddite able to shut down one of, their, one of Buena Vista's top performers from last set. So we'll see what... Buena Vista decides to do where to decide to go from here with the Donkey Kong locked in two stocks on this Donkey Kong victory really able to take that stock with just I mean taking advantage of a big body right getting that that classic combo game that had worked for them at low percents and then surprisingly those down smashes and I mean thinking back to the down smash the forward smash that caught on the platform using those big swinging hit boxes you know these really committal moves was able to find a lot of mileage out of them they were um i loved especially the way like one rising aerial doesn't really combo in anything but it sets up a text <coughs> excuse me um it sets up a text situation um it sets up an opportunity to get a pop-up and then if they're gonna pop up there's a chance they'll panic jump and if they panic jump you have the opportunity to jump up with those long-lasting moves, get a down air. Uh, I feel like Donkey Kong, the way Lada is playing them, is all about putting your opponents into a, not a combo state, but a panic state, where they're just doing anything to get away from your big, meaty hands. And that's actually what gets them right into them. Good stuff by Luddite right there. Yeah, Donkey Kong, a uh, uh, character that I think we've seen a couple times here, not too frequently, but... Right, they are the classic tank. They are a, a character that can take a lot of stocks, can take a lot of hits, but they are also a big body that is uh, threatened by characters that have strong combo games or poke like Sephiroth does. So we'll see what uh, X Wing can do here in this matchup. They've got a one stock lead. Curious to see the stage selection. We got to see Small Battlefield for the first time in that previous match. And now we go over to the Animal Crossing stages. Town and City, the site of this one. Luddite will have to drop one more stock here. Just being some, <laughs> just being friendly with some, uh, <laughs> some footstools in a row. Drops one, and we are underway here with a one stock lead for Buena Vista. There was something, something, no more monkeys jumping on the head, but like, we're into the match now. It's passed. <laughs> we're out of here. And it's dash tacks, it's down airs, and it's really difficult for this Sephiroth to not die here. But mashes out of the grab, forces them into a really awkward situation. Luddite stumbled off the side, but goes above the counter right there. And, um, Luddite, uh, we'll take those. We all take those. You got it. <laughs> Ooh, DK Punch immediately at zero and already working on this second stock. Luddite very aware, I think, of what uh, x Wing wants to do. That's going to be no tech oh. in that situation, and that means that stock is gone. Goodbye. Another one off the board. Luddite. Can they continue their reign? Another string of back airs, and that one will be shut down. They will be able to get back to the ledge, but that's going to be another mistake. No! The jump, the up B, and it's not enough. Rinse, repeat from the second stock, and Luddite pushes Buena Vista to their last member. I'm not going to mince words. There are situations where you should tech those, and this was one of them. But it's also the kind of thing where it's so audacious. Like, that's the day one combo. That's the your older brother is playing Donkey Kong is like, 
there's no way to beat this. You can't do anything about this. And because it's so audacious, there's almost a little bit of, wait, they tried that? Wait, they just tried that again? And it worked? Like, you're not even thinking the tech, because most Donkey Kongs know it's not going to work, and they'll just throw you off stage. So why are you even thinking of it? But at the end of the day, if something is so simple that obviously you're ready for it, then maybe you're not. Um, and Luddite demonstrating the obsolescence of all those fancy movement techniques if you can't press the tech button right there, as Buena Vista is down to who could be their last player. Yeah, and it's going to be tough. Luddite, I mean, going for things like that shows uh, an air of confidence and finding windows to to get to those situations, right? Getting grabs uh, against a character that's got plenty of range like Sephiroth, not the easiest thing to do. Also have to commend their ability to, I guess, read X-Wing's uh, uh, counter usage, right? We mentioned it before that Velvet was getting caught out many a time by X-Wing's counter, but Luddite just going high with things like the forward air, reaching around that shield, that counter hitbox, and getting the job done. And now we see Buena Vista bringing their own DLC to the table. Pyramithra going to be the last player. Kazmer, I believe, the uh, tag on this Pyramithra. So their first time <laughs> on uh, on stream as well. Luddite just, again, having fun as we get ready for this one. Can Buena Vista continue to push us to the end and can this player take the next five stocks off of Sienna Heights or will Luddite end things here and now? No tech immediately Aww. and the side B is too low and another stock seemingly gifted to Sienna Heights. Their whole playstyle feels like it's designed to be like, haha, gotcha. Um, and it, it it's bad because Luddite is also just a good player. So Luddite will hit all these crazy combos and then go for things like this again. This time there is an attempt at a recovery right here, but you're in a very unfortunate situation. That will be the end of it when you just get footstooled. You can't grab the ledge and well. Oh God, oh. Uh, is it happening again? So it, so it might be happening again. <laughs> okay, uh, Kazmer is able to get to the center of the stage, and they go to over to the Pyra for any hope at just stopping the bleeding right here, but Luddite is just holding their ground right outside the burst range up until Kazmer marches right on up to them and says, no, we are interacting right now. We're playing on Luddite's terms here, and he is having a day with it. Another grab, a will hold instead, go for the down throw. It has DK punch. This one's gonna, just going to be a down throw. Tried to read a tech or roll out there, but again, he is just looking for the panic options, getting all the damage in the world, and he'll catch a jump with the forward air, and that will be all she wrote for the second crew battle. Luddite shuts him down and gets the victory for Sienna Heights. Luddite? Ever, can everyone else just mute the stream? It's just me and Luddite right now. There's something wrong with you. Also, I love you. But also, there is an art to frustrating your opponent. Um, and I feel like we just saw it in its purest form right there. Because there was nothing, like, inherently BM about what they're doing. It was disadvantageous for Donkey Kong to approach right there. So why would you? You stay right outside the burst range and make them come to you. You didn't have to make them do it like that. But you did. And uh, it was beautiful. Great stuff. Good stuff, Luddite. And uh, good stuff from both these teams. But it will be Sienna Heights University walking away with the win right here. 2-0. And what I might see you say was a rather dominant fashion. Yeah, I, I mean, a, a massive victory. I mean, when you consider that last week, it took them you know, down to the last player both times, able to clutch it out with two stocks apiece. You know, felt like they got the win, but it wasn't as clean as they'd like. These victories felt a whole lot smoother for the side of Siena Heights. And Buena Vista, unfortunately, right, dropped some stocks that they're really going to want back. There were a handful of SDs at the end there, but it also kind of played to uh, Siena Heights' style. Like you said, there were many a times where it felt like they were trying to induce panic, and Buena Vista panicked. They pressed some buttons that 
didn't get them back on stage. They also didn't press some buttons that could have given them a chance. And thus they ended up dropping some stocks that could have lasted a bit longer and given them a bit more mileage. So Buena Vista will have to go back to the drawing board for next week. But you can tell now that there there is room to grow for them. There certainly is. And you were mentioning one thing about how they were putting them into these situations where they just wanted them to mess up. I feel like the purest form of that was those down throws at the end that led to the stock finisher. Down throw, into re-grab, into down throw, into re-grab, into down throw, which is crazy to do when you're on a character with cargo throw. But at the same time, all you're doing is just making your opponent panic. You're making your opponent do a stupid option, like jump up really high and burn all their resources right above a Donkey Kong who really would like to forward air you. There were other ways to finish that stock. Quote, optimal ways to finish that stock. But that was Luddate's way to finish that stock. And good on them for doing it. And uh, it looks like we might just be getting an interview with Velvet or Luddite. So we're going to run to a quick break real quick, get that all set up. And when we return, we will have an interview with Sienna Heights.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to ECAC. We are here with Luddite, who just won for Sienna Heights. Uh, 5-0, I think. How you doing, Luddite? I'm actually having a great time over here. I so, it's always fun to play DK and just kind of mop the floor a little bit. Yeah, uh, I would imagine so. That looked like a very fun game. And normally, I would ask how you're feeling, which I just did. But I got to ask why. Like what like how just why <laughs> why well my boy dk doesn't get a lot of love from sakurai so no. i have to give him his, his due diligence i just I'm, I'm here to have fun this is my third sport i play baseball and bowling this is like my side hustle and mm -hmm. uh yeah i'm here to have fun everyone was laughing during the set i was having a great time so my, why not i don't even play dk either that's like I play a lot of characters, and DK is probably not even top five. That's hype. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'm glad you're you're having fun with it, and uh, congrats on your victory. So, this squad in particular, uh, overall, how do you feel about the start to the year? You guys are two and zero to start things off, and this win a little bit larger than last week's. We got a, we got a great group of guys here, people that put in work day after day. My boy Perry's pit, you know. We had a lot of good guys here. Velvet, respect to him. I took the interview, but he really deserves all the credit. He's he's the heart of the team. Just a great group of guys. Yeah. Uh, uh, talking to Velvet a little bit before the match, I could definitely see how Velvet was instrumental in like getting that experience to the rest of the people. But I got to ask you, um, you were very much playing a mental game more than you were playing just a buttons game there. and. Is there ever a moment where you're like, oh, I'm in this person's head? Oh, yeah. As soon as I did the down throw, I knew it was over. <laughs> I, I saw Pither on the screen. I was like, okay, well, I have nothing to lose because, again, I'm DK and I'm playing a minus three. And if I win, it's just funny. So I just play with that mindset. You probably tell I'm a Mars fan. So my main goal is to get in their head. And I think it worked out pretty well today. Mm-hmm. Worked out well for, for you guys. And uh, so back-to-back 5-0 -back victories this week. Next week, you get Bethel Pilots, who uh, are playing now. And they had a, a strong run against Buena Vista in week one. So do you guys do any uh, prep work or, or VOD reviews going into next week? What does the preparation for these weekly matchups look like for uh, Sienna Heights? So we usually have one guy that kind of stream snipes. We haven't really gotten that recently. But we just kind of show up, practice against each other, play a little Wi-Fi, just grind the game out. We don't even really know who we play at the time. I walked in today. I said, you know who we're playing? And everyone's like, nope, no idea. You just kind of, you got you to gotta adapt to your surroundings. Honestly, yeah, I can see it. It's clear you all have fun. Um, I got to ask, um, baseball, bowling, uh, those are both v very much like, just like a burst of large contribution uh, where you're not always getting the chance to shine and then boom, you're suddenly carrying the team. So I got to ask, like, what comparisons do you see between your other sports and this one? <laughs> Why pitch? So that's totally true. Like, it's all about yeah. it's all about mind games. You know, if, if you stare at the hitter long enough, you throw a <laughs> fastball inside, you know, let them know what's up and they yeah. get scared and they get away from the plate. It's like the same thing as smash. Now you do you do mm -hmm. DK down throw, and they're like, why are you doing that? You have cargo throw. And then it just kind of works. It just works. <laughs> All right. Well, Luddite, thank you very much for your time. Hope you're having fun out there. It's clear that you are, and hope you have fun the rest of the season. And uh, I wish the best of luck to you. <laughs> well, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. And with that, I think we're just about ready to wrap up for the day. Thank you very much very much to everyone for tuning in that has been ecac super smash brothers ultimate i think tomorrow we've got valorant coming up on at 8 p.m so be sure to tune back in esports all week every week it's esports you 24 7 stream forever so be sure to tune in um but yeah 8 p.m tomorrow there's gonna be more esports i've been keel miles this has been soy hope you all have a wonderful night take it easy out there